What's up guys and gals, let's get back to business here at Helgar's Hole. So in the previous episode, you will know that I had been stuck in traffic all day and thusly was playing a little bit poorly to be honest, although it's kind of like our food supply just sort of ran out all of a sudden. I think it's largely due to the fact that people are now like dying and I don't know, this number has fluctuated in between 67 and 64 over and over and over again, which leads me to believe that like the perfect space for our food amount is 64 and every time we exceed it, we find ourselves feeding like one too many people. And so it's fine. Oh, they're actually planting this season. How nice of them to do so, you dicks. These farmers right here, on my shit list, completely and totally. Today I'm in a better mood, and you will know why very, very shortly. It's because I had nachos for breakfast this morning. Mm -mm -mm. Any day that starts out with nachos cannot conceivably go wrong. There is no way to go from nachos to a terrible day unless like some horrible family tragedy befalls you. And even then you'll be like, well, at least I had nachos. I mean, on the plus side, there is that. At least we had nachos before something terrible happened, so you're like, well, at least the first half of my day was pretty sweet. In any case, in this episode, what we need to do is we need to continue just, like, working towards making ourselves have more food, which is our big problem right now. I mean, we're pretty much out of food. This will allow us to get a little bit more work done, and I think I may go for two fields right here. You guys are going to disagree with this decision, and I can tell you precisely why you're going to disagree with this decision, because food is not necessarily so stable from farms in this game. It's one of the big things that I've noticed that I think probably needs to be adjusted slightly with a patch or something of that nature. I think farming needs to be a little bit better and foraging needs to be a little bit worse. And I, just to let, I'm not one of those people that's like nerf everything. That's not the kind of human being that I am. But at the same time, I feel like there's a reason that like established cities have farming. And oh, we're out of stuff. Well, then continue just making hide coats, sir. Unless you used it all up. We have seven high coats and 23 warm coats. That's pretty sweet. I'll take that. Actually, no. Forget that. Forget that noise. Make wool coats. Yeah. Because I love having clothes that aren't washable and also are super smelly and itchy. Wool clothing, I am not a fan of. I had like this pair of wool pants. And they were the most rock and roll pants on earth. And this is when I was like 16. And it was like this bright green pair of wool pants that I got at the Goodwill. I walked to Goodwill one day and I was like, you know what I want in life? I want bright green ass pants that are made out of sheep, <laughs> out of sheep fur. I almost said something else, but anyways, I want bright ass green pants that are made from sheep fur and that is all that I want in life. And so I went and I bought these badass pants and I was like, yeah, and I wore them home and I did like five power stances on the corner of like every street. I was like, pacha when I went to push the button, everything, because we have buttons. In California, we have these little buttons that go, ee and you push the little button and just in case you're that guy I just want to let you know while we're on the subject pushing that button a thousand times does not make it go any faster I have a friend that works for the city and you push the button once and it puts you in a queue like going ee -er, ee -er, ee -er, ee -er, ee -er, like 600 times while you're standing there and driving me crazy because I left my window open I'm just letting you know that pushing the button that many times does not make it work any faster and so back to the subject I was doing my power stances on the corner just like kaya. I was, I was feeling pretty metal at the time because in high school I was pretty metal. I mean, I had hair down to my butthole. I was rocking it back in the day. I mean, I had the hair, I had like the aviator shades going on, and I had wool pants, and I had everything to look forward to in life. My dreams hadn't been dashed yet, essentially. And so if you're in that period of your life, enjoy it so much because someday someone in the world will come to you and be like, you know what you should do right now? You should go get a job in retail. And grudgingly you oblige because you're tired of everybody looking at you like you're a bum. And so they were like, you know where you work now? Blockbuster Video. And if you're too young to know what a Blockbuster Video is, it was a place where back in the day, when we etched our movies in tablets, we we had these places called Blockbuster Video. I'm being facetious right now. Blockbuster Video, I worked there for like three years, and it was actually the best job I ever had. If you ever saw the movie Clerks, that's exactly how my job was. We really just kind of messed with people all day long. You kind of have to make a slight bit of humor out of people who like get so angry over the fact that you don't have like a $3 movie. I'm really not going to upset my life over a $3 movie. It's just not one of those things that personally I feel like I'm capable of. But some people got downright just their day was done. They obviously did not have their nachos that morning. So anyways, what am I doing here? I'm waiting to see if my food recovers. That's the big sort of am I going to live through this season junction that I think we're at right now where we really just need to sit around and make sure... Do I have anything here that I can trade? I have 40 hide coats. That's not so terrible, actually. We could sell off some hide coats. I do feel as though hide coats are not something that we're going to be using a whole lot of anytime soon, so we may as well just, like, do that now. What is he trading for us? Oh, he has sheep. Well, 
In the case of the sheep, we could do another sheep pen, and we could just have, like, a metric ton of wool and meat running around. I mean, that is a legitimate thing that we could do right now. Instead, we can convert that other pen that was used for chickens into sheeps. I don't know if I even have enough, like, 15 times 40, obviously, I have enough to buy a couple sheep. In fact, let's go ahead and just kind of weasel this one out. I'm not even going to do any math right now. I'm just going to see. Yeah, there it is, right? We can afford one sheep. And so instead, I don't think I'm going to chow down on that. If I could get two sheeps, I think I'd be a lot more... Well, I think I'd be a lot more agreeable with that deal. But as it stands right now, one sheep doesn't really do me a whole lot of good unless he's just going to sit around playing with himself. Unless he is an asexual sheep that's able to reproduce all on his own via some method that I'm unaware of within the sheeping species, he's destined for the chopping block because I have nowhere else to take him. I guess I could conceivably fill up both pens like I wonder my big wonder is that if I have nine sheep here and I tell them to open up a sheep farm over here will they transfer the sheep from here to here or will they kill this sheep I don't know let's try it out let's go with an extra she oh we have five laborers well damn that's a little weak but I think what might be a good plan now then is to maybe go for another field right here since we have enough people to totally populate another field let's do that I'm gonna go for a second field and so I was kind of thinking about the best way to explain how crops work, because I know in the last episode I didn't really talk about why crops are any good, or why they're terrible. And so, in the interest of talking about it for a little bit, why we need to discuss this, is if you think about it like this. So think about it as multi like massively multiplayer online role-playing at MMORPGs, Most Men Online Roleplay Girls, is the way that I remember that. That is the acronym that I use. But in any case, if you think about it, I'm also going to try this. Let's go ahead and start working that again, and we're going to call it a sheet pen. We'll see if they move sheep over here and we can have double the amount of sheep. And maybe that'll work out in our favor. I've got to figure that having 17 sheep producing a surplus in sheep is probably better than... I also need to keep an eye on this down here. Did they already kill that other sheep? That sheep is outside the pen. Herdsmen, do your job better. I hired you to do one thing and you're already failing at it. It'd be kind of humorous if they killed the sheep over there and they just brought over the meat and laid it in the field. We got confused, my lord. You were not specific enough. <laughs> oh god. We're gonna do some pumpkin farming over here. And then we're gonna go on up to eight guys. And then there's an extra one over here. And that leaves me with one extra laborer. And I feel as though this is gonna allow us to recover on the foodie front. But in this episode, that was really the one big thing that I wanted to accomplish. Is I wanted to make sure that going into the future, we had enough food to survive. And now what this means is that if this hunting lodge right here is doing a great job, this herb garden is doing a mediocre one. To the point where I don't really know if it justifies its own existence. It's doing okay right now. Like, it's not the best place to be if you're trying to gather food. But it's still doing reasonably well. I mean, I think it's doing better than this herb garden over here. So I think it'll survive. The other thing we want to think about is more wells. Now that I'm on the subject. Let's go ahead and build ourselves a few more wells. I think those are in our... Yeah, there we go. In our, like, municipal menu. Go ahead and put a well over there. A well over there. A well right there. And then we also need a well out here. Wells are kind of important. After half our city burned down in kind of a satanic blaze. I mean, it's honestly, it's a group full of 1500s peasants, so it kind of guides our lines of thought. So I have to assume that, like, anything terrible that happens is satanic in nature. And so we'll probably blame it on, like, the first person that, like, contracts, I don't know. Somebody will have, like, a mental disorder and we'll kind of, like, string them up and be like, Listen, it's your fault. We know it's you. Deep down inside, in our 1500s hearts, we know it's you, man. And we're gonna throw you into the water, and if you sink, you are totally innocent. And that's kind of, I always thought that was kind of ironic how that works out. Like, if it, you sink, you totally are okay. Like, if you sink and you drown, it means you're not guilty. And then you just get to go off to heaven because you were innocent anyways. And, you know, if you were guilty, you would float. And then we get to do even more horrible things to you. <laughs> it's like, really? This system kind of seems like it has no winners. Like, going into this, I really feel as though the price is wrong for everybody. I feel as though, like, really when we were organizing this system, it was not built with... <laughs> it was not built really with the offense in mind. It was really kind of... The plaintiff doesn't have a whole lot of chances here, and I was trying to think of the word. I don't know why plaintiff was a word that was escaping me right there, but it was. So it's okay. Let's just live with it. It's okay. Plaintiff was a word that I forgot there for a second. I've been forgetting things lately. Like, really, I, I realize that when I say that to you, you guys are like, oh, you forget things all the time. What the hell are you talking about? But what I mean is that really... Like, really full-on, like, forgetting, like, really important stuff. And it's really starting to worry me. They scheduled me for an MRI on Friday. I've never been to an MRI before. They asked me if I wanted like a... I think they asked me if I wanted like a Xanax or something before I went. I was like, really? You're going to give me Xanny bars to come in? So I'm assuming that an MRI is probably traumatizing. From what I understand, they just shove you into a big old tube. But in any case, I went down and I was like, you know what? I've been forgetting stuff a lot lately. I've had a lot of headaches and stuff too. 
And I went to the doctor, just like in the off chance, and he's like, well, I don't think anything's wrong with you, but maybe we'll shove you into a tube for a little bit. Because we haven't used it in a while, and I feel like we need to justify all these taxpayer dollars we spent on it. So we'll shove you into a tube, and we'll get back to you in like five to six weeks when you're probably dead from whatever's wrong with you anyways. Such is the joy of Medi-Cal. Yay! So if you don't know what Medi-Cal is, like Medi-Cal is this thing that we have in California where, like if you're too poor to afford health insurance, they put you on Medi-Cal. And what Medi-Cal means is that you have this fancy card that says that you're going to die before you ever see a doctor. That's really, they should kind of just put that on the back, like, Medi-Cal comes with no guarantees that you're ever going to see a doctor. Please be aware that Medi-Cal probably means we're going to send you to the funeral long before we send you to any sort of doctor. We here at Medi-Cal appreciate your business and look forward to seeing you eight feet under. <laughs> it's just like, wow, okay. <laughs> Alrighty then. But I was excited about getting my Medi-Cal card because basically it means that at least I can sign up to get stuff. Otherwise, that mean guy at the door with the money bag. We have this guy in America where he's got like this money bag. Like he's really got like a money bag. And when you're sick, what you do is you go, dear Mr. Money Bag Man, I'm going to call him Uncle Pennyworth right now. Uncle Pennyworth, I'm feeling very ill. And he's like, well, unless you've got $900, you can't even come inside. And then he twirls his mustache at you. He looks sort of like the Monopoly Man meets kind of Colonel Sanders. That's how I imagine him in my head. And anyways, kind of like a Rockefellian type individual. But that's basically how it works. Like you walk in and you're like, I don't feel so great. And they're like, okay, well, you can go to the ER and we can charge you like a bajillion dollars. And they have to take you, or we can tell you that you don't have enough money to receive medical treatment. And that's that. <laughs> it's got, I have to see the humor in the situation. Just like for me, I have such a black sense of humor that with stuff like that, I can't even get mad about it. Like, I really am just sort of like, that's so horrible that it's just kind of funny in a really like black humor sort of way. I have a really, really dark sense of humor, like in real life. It really, I don't think it shines through here on the channel very much. What does he have for us? Walnut seeds. That means we could plant an orchard for the first time. Which might be sort of interesting. Sokori is that guy's name. Kind of an exotic sounding name. I don't know where that name would really be from, but Sokori has come to us from somewhere and he has decided to give us his walnuts. Which sounds all kinds of terrible. But we only have 600 things to trade right now. We're a little behind on blacksmithing. And so some of our supplementary goods, I think it may be in our best interest now to... Make another blacksmith, I think, and let me look at the boundary. Okay, so I can put a blacksmith right there without any trouble, so let's do that first. And we need to get back to the point where we have, like, a surplus of stuff. Because for the last little bit, we haven't had a surplus of anything in a really long time. Like, we have a little surplus of food right now. Not necessarily, like, the amazing surplus that I would like to have on hand, but really the type of surplus that I want is, like, alcohol, coats, and tools that we can sell off because those things are worth a lot of money. So I think if we can get another blacksmith in, we've got plenty of iron going on. Our iron supply seems to have stabilized out at about 115. I think we are losing iron right now, if I'm looking at it, because before I think we were maxed out on it. And so the fact that we're below 200, which is where we set the threshold, leads me to think that perhaps we don't have the surplus I thought we had. Then again, I could be wrong. We may also want to set up a coal mine over here. Because what coal allows us to do, I haven't explained what coal does. Basically coal, you go to your blacksmith, and if you look on this little drop-down list right here, you can make steel tools. The steel tools are way better than the iron tools. They last a lot longer, and as a result, they accumulate a lot faster, which means you're going to have like this massive surplus of things you can sell whenever you get yourself one of those nice little guys like Sikori that comes along on a boat. I didn't have enough money to buy his walnuts. So I'm going to leave his walnuts attached to him, and we're just going to ignore him and pretend like they're not there. Basically, it's going to be his normal experience at the bar. So Corey's like, oh, you don't have to take a cheap shot at me. Debra, my brother's huge. <laughs> Get in the car. God, my Ray Romano. <laughs> my brother's huge and my mother's obnoxious. I don't know how you get a voice like that. Like, really... Are you just born with that? Like, does it just come out that way? It's amazing, like, the different vocal timbers you can get. It sort of surprises me. I'm going to get another guy going over here. And now that we have no surplus laborers, it leaves us in a spot where we're kind of just hanging out, waiting for stuff to happen. Typically, when this occurs, I feel as though I need to build more houses. That's usually the first thing that I start to look at whenever this happens. But in the case, did they put sheep over here by any chance? Yay, nay. Say hey. Hey. Or are they just killing them off? I really need to catch them when I'm paying attention over here. And figure somebody has died. It was killed by a falling tree. My god. 
His name was Four Inch. Which is, you know, slightly less enamoring than Seven Inch or Six Inch. If my name was Four Inch, I'd feel like my parents kind of hated me. I'd be like, you're really kind of setting me up for... Why would you name your son Four Inch? I'm going to assume that Four Inch was... <laughs> I'm going to assume Four Inch was a male and not a female. So I'm going to assume that it was the delivery and not the order there. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to be humorous about this whole thing. But it's really kind of difficult without being like overtly just disgusting. Like I, I always have that... Because I'm a huge fan of like 1F Jeff and like some of the really kind of like raunchier LPers that like really get out there and just like no holds barred just they just grill they get out there like in the meat and potatoes of just like the disgusting nature of the human psyche and they really just kind of plumb those depths and I'm always having like an inner dialogue about myself whether I want to do that or not because honestly like when you do like funny stuff like you do lock yourself out of a lot of different subjects when you try not to be filthy. Because there's a lot of jokes out there that really lend themselves to like a filthy nature and just flying off the handle which is like F this, F that. And I do talk like that in real life, just so you know that I'm no saint. I do, I curse like a sailor in real life. I really, I really sincerely do. And I'm always impressed that I manage to, I, I edit, I do a lot of editing too. So don't think that I've never slipped on a video, you'll just never hear it because I edit it out. Like I have like, when we were on the, I used to do, I was a radio DJ for a little bit. When you're a radio DJ, you have this really cool thing, which there's like a six second delay on everything you do on the radio. And you have like this box and this guy. And like his only job is to catch you if you swear. Like you have somebody that just sits there all day and they listen to the broadcast. If anybody like calls in and they swear, he just sits there with either a beeper button. It's like boop. And he just like beeps it out or he edits it real fast. And then you're just like, whoa, ho, ho, buddy, you can't say that sort of stuff on the radio. That's not all right. This is a family show about heavy metal, I guess. I mean, the last song was satanic, and the song before that was about God knows what, like cannibalism or something. But it's a family show, guy. You can't talk about that here. <laughs> but in any case, working on the radio, you can absolutely assume somebody's going to swear eventually. I'm going to build a couple more houses now. Not talking about my history for too long here. But in any case, I think I found, like, a successful medium where, like, I swear every now and again. And I make, like, jokes that are on the line that you guys can just, like, fill in for yourselves. I don't know. I don't, I don't do it to like judge or anything because I think it's wrong. I just feel like it opens me up to like more people. Like I know a lot of my friends and stuff have kids now. And so I'm always constantly like earmuffs, you know what I mean? Like they're, they got like three and four year olds running around. And I assume like a lot of people on the channel are like in their mid late twenties like I am. And so I guess that's kind of what it is. Like I'm already starting to censor myself in real life just based on the fact that all of my friends have kids now. It's almost sort of like, I'm like, how do we have so many kids? Like where did all these kids come from? Little sprouts running around everywhere. Little blossoms. There's a front half to that moniker, but I'm going to leave it out. Got a little... <laughs> there are human blossoms running around all over the place. I will say this. I'm still not a baby person. Like, people say that you come around when you get older, but nope. People try and hand me a baby nowadays. I'm like, nah. I've seen what comes out of a baby. I'm all good. No thank you, sir. We got peaches over here. Will that give us peach seeds, I wonder? I wonder if that'll give us peach seeds. That seems like a really cheap way to get peach seeds. I, I'm really kind of concerned. I do want to start planting orchards and stuff. I don't think that will. Like, deep down, I really don't think that's going to give me a peach orchard. That reminds me of being a kid because we had a peach orchard right next to my house. Like, the trees were all still planted, but nobody farmed it anymore. So every year, it would just grow an ass ton of peaches. And so you could just go, everybody in the neighborhood did. You went over there and just got baskets of the things. And then in my backyard, we had an apricot tree, we had a peach tree, and in the front yard, we had crab apples, pomegranates, and a willow tree, I think, now that I'm thinking about it. It's weird when you think back on those memories. Like, you got, because you remember the smells, too, when you're talking about it. You remember what the orchard smells like and everything when you go out there. Like, in the summer, it would smell like old wood. Like, it would smell like old sort of rotting wood, like when you flip a big log open and there's a bunch of louses around. Or leases, or I don't know. There's a bunch of lice running around there. We go. I bet that's the word. There's a bunch of wood lice running around, like the roly polies. That's the formal name for roly polies, not the lice that bite you and get all up in your merc and kind of causing you problems. But anyways, I think I'm gonna break the episode off here because there's not really a whole lot to do at the moment. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle as we fully recover in this episode and we start to get some other things figured out with regards to kind of our iron supply, our tool supply, and all the other things that we want to get done as we play through the game. We are going to have to open up some new mining operations pretty soon, I think. This one's still producing. 
I think we may have to add a few more workers will be like the real thing that we need to do. And once this dies out, we'll build another one, put the 15 over there, and that'll be that. But my name is Splattercat. Hi, dude, to all of you. I'm glad you decided to stop by. I've had my nachos. I've had my fun. We've made some jokes. We've had a good time. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody.